as I mentioned at the end of the last Lanchester video, go and check the playlist for that one if you haven't already. Today I'm going to show you around the new car that I've got. Uh, I'm not going to make it a silly surprise reveal, you'll have already seen from the thumbnail and the title. It's a Maestro. It'll be the third Maestro that I've had dealings with. The first one I borrowed from somebody who was very generous to help me out when I was stuck uh, with no car to get me to work. The second one was a Ledbury, and arguably a mistake, but it was a very reliable car, if unbelievably slow, and it saw me through a difficult patch. And that's kind of how this one's come along. With the Princess out of action, the Lanchester not ready, I'm stuck without a personal car, and this one came up on one of the forums I use, at a good price, at the right time, and even though the mileage is very high, the rest of the car really doesn't show it. And I think with a little bit of TLC, it'll be a very practical, very sensible car, and should see me through the winter at the very least, which is all I really need. As I mentioned in the last video, we've got a new arrival since the Princess is needing the engine to be sorted out and the Lanchester still in bits. And some of you already know what it is, you're on the forums, some of you don't. So let's have a look. It is a maestro. Let's have a proper look around. It's not my first maestro, I've had some before. This one's. Well, it's not a special trim because it's only a City X, so it's fairly basic, which is what I like. And what makes this one special is that it's not had very many owners. I'm only the third owner. And the owner before me didn't have it very long. Because he was basically just getting it back on the road. So the first owner had the car from 1988 until 2019. And the second owner basically got it in MOT, got it back on the road but already has quite a few cars. So moved it on. What makes this one interesting is the mileage, which is quite a lot. And you wouldn't think it looking at the car. I mean, it's a bit rough around the edges, the cracked dashboard and, you know, the interior trim's a bit tired. It's had the usual issues, like, the headlining, all the fabrics come off, they always do. And the visors are sandpaper? I don't know. But not the end of the world, it's all easy to fix that kind of stuff. We've got the usual issues around the wheel arches. That's probably the worst of it. I mean, this is no worse than the Ledbury I used to have. A little bit of attention with a welder and that'd be fine. The bottom of the doors, a little bit scabby, but again, not terrible. I mean, remember, 180,000 miles on this thing, which is a lot. It's had, at some point, a bit of a bump on this back corner. So that's pushed the bumper right in on this side. And you go over to this side, it's not as tight. That's fairly easy to fix. Just pop the bumper off and straighten it back out again. Parcel shelf still in one piece. But yeah, the boot's nice and tidy. There's Good solid strut tops. It's a little tiny bit damp in here, but I think I think that's coming in through one of the light clusters. I'm gonna have a look, but I don't think it's anything more serious than that. We had a lot of rain last night, and the rest of the car's nice and dry, so I'm not that concerned. Oh yeah, 
this door is a bit it's like the princess it's dropped a bit on the hinges so it just needs some new hinges manual locking no central locking on this one remote or otherwise you can see the door cards are a little bit saggy again that's a fairly standard maestro thing uh, it's missing one trim cap on that grab handle it's missing both of them on this side again fairly normal the interior light isn't working I've not investigated that yet it has digital clock and that works it's got the original head unit I've not tested it I assume it works the heater controls um, there's something off I don't know exactly what but they don't go all the way to the bottom I was told about this when I bought the car again not an issue but everything else works fine I'll take these seat covers off soon and we'll have a look underneath those Let's have a look under the bonnet. There you go, that opens up quite easy. It is the A series engine, um, which British Leyland used forever. This one's the A, which is the slightly newer version. I never know exactly what it is with A engines, I don't know if it's unleaded converted. I'll do some research. So, it isn't the later 5 speed. So you don't have the VW gearbox. This is the earlier four-speed uh, gearbox, which lives down there. And unlike the Mini, the spark plugs are on the back. And the exhaust manifold and carburetors on the front. The airbox is about as big as the engine, which is hilarious. It's an old SU carburetor, so I know my way around that. And being an A series, it's just it's trouble-free. It probably well, it does leak a bit of oil somewhere from the rocker cover. Yeah, that's normal. There's something interesting going on with foil. I think that's the heat shield. I've not got as far as pulling things apart yet, so I don't know. A uh, little mechanical fuel pump down there. And lots and lots and lots of space. So it's not a difficult one to work on at all. Uh, you don't have the, the same sort of issues that you do with minis getting down the back of the engine, which is nice. But yeah, now, I've been told, I've not actually tried it out yet, but I'm told the gear change is a bit sloppy. I think it might be that rod there. That, that doesn't look great. I have already found replacement rods, so if I can't sort that one out, I can get a replacement. Yeah, let's start it up and see if it behaves. When it was delivered, it did start and drive straight off the trailer, so shouldn't be a problem. But it's not super, it's very cold.
so one of my first jumps is definitely going to be giving this a bit of a tune, getting it a bit happier. One thing I'm going to have to do with this is give it a bit of a tune, figure out why it's a bit hesitant. I suspect the timing's off a bit, um, probably a few other things. It's on full choke at the moment. It's cold today, but it's not monstrously cold. Not like it was last night. And I think there might be a bit of a blow on the manifold. Again, I'm not worried. I did expect some niggles, and it's not going to stop the car being driven. I'm pretty sure the car will drive just fine. On the gauges, the fuel and the temperature gauge, these don't work. I'm told the gauges themselves are fine, but that the, uh, it's either a fuse or a bad earth or something like that, we'll look into it. And you can see all the little lights on there, including in the uh, caravan light, but I don't have a tow bar on this. Manual choke. Oops, all the way out at the moment. The steering wheel, I thought it might, but you can get the steering wheel and you can kind of squidge this round. My other maestro was like this, it's, oh it's horrible. But it's alright because your hands are usually down like this area and that's all fine, it's just this top bit, oh. Right, glove box with your little pockets. Um, these are for your cassette tapes, if I remember rightly. Everything inside the car is actually nice and dry, so that's good. Oh, the um, the interior light isn't working. Um, oh, it's got a bulb in it. Probably just a switch. Lives in the little door just here. And um, yeah, that's that's very sticky. So yeah, that's the switch that's at fault there. Turning a little bit of oil off, that's what that, uh, that smoke is. Oh, figure out where it's coming from. There you go, one happy little maestro that uh, runs and drives and stops and does all the things you need it to do. It should be fine. It'll be fine, right? Yeah, it'll be fine. A quick razz up and down the street and it's off the choke. It's idling much better. It's not right. Check that. Brakes are okay. They're a little bit noisy from the car being stood, I think. The gear change is sloppy, like I've been warned, but it's not terrible. I reckon it could be adjusted up fine. 
okay, it's okay, it'll do. I'm happy enough with it. I paid for this piece of British engineering perfection. £395 with 12 months MOT, which you cannot grumble at. This is why I'm not too worried about its foibles, because it's going to have them at that price and that mileage. It's, it's not really an issue to me, so I do like it. It's a, a neat old thing. What I really want to do is I want to get these car covers off. So let's set this up in the tripod and let's do that. I will be honest, I was not expecting that. This driver's seat did not feel particularly bad. But normally, all of this is shot, and all of this is shot, and that's why there's covers. This one, wow, that's, uh, that's one of the best micro seats I've ever seen. So I wonder if they were on from new. That'd be good. Let's see what the back one's like. The tricky part is figuring out how everything comes to bits. Can you tell I've not worked with one of these for a while? the passenger seat cover off, it's exactly the same as the other ones in really exceptional shape. It's really nice. But then, I took the head restraint cover off and can someone explain that to me? Why, why is there garden hose on the sticks? I 
have never seen anybody do that before. Can't put that back on when I did. Let's have a look under these carpets. There's how many we've got? We got one broken in half. We have two. We have some lovely, lovely household carpet. And underneath, an absolutely spotless carpet. These are always worn through. They're just, they're always thin and tatty. It's not even stained. Let's see, driver's side. This one's got to be bad, right? Number one. Hallway carpet number two. Okay, that is... Yeah, this must have had covers on from you. It, it just must have. There's just no wear on anything. Except for the pedals, which, you know, they're showing their age, understandably. What is that carpet up there? Hmm. In the back. Oh, it's covered. Oh, the cover's still attached. It's awkward. Again, tidy, clean, nothing to worry about. That's really surprising. Oh, I think we've done alright with this. Overall, give it a good clean. And it's mostly just going to be a bit of fat limb. Lovely. There's some cracking engineering on this car. Proper aerospace stuff. Lovely. Perfect. In all seriousness, I do love stuff like that. It means somebody cared. Maybe they couldn't get the right bit, but they cared enough to try. Another thing I've noticed is, now that I've got the back seat in, the lap belt's in the wrong place. Um, I think they've got two of the buckles muddled up for some reason. So we'll have to fix that. Not right away, but we'll sort it. And I think that hose is to hold that seat up, the head restraint up. But that's the first for me. I've not seen anybody do that before. Oh yeah. Got the maestros have this. If you find the seat belt uncomfortable, you can move where it goes. You just pull that knob out and put it where you want it. It's actually a really useful thing. Um, very underrated. The other thing to go through is the little treasure chest that lives in the dashboard, also known as an ashtray. And there's some money in there, so that's cash back. And I assume that is what it's been re-sprayed in. Because there are some touch-ups on the car. The match isn't that bad, actually. Um, this wing, you can oh, you might be able to see. There you go. A bit of crazing in the paint. So I think this wing's been replaced. And I'm wondering if they lost the plastic bracket or it broke that normally holds on that edge of the bumper. And that's why there's a coach bolt. We shall see. Let's see what treasure we have. This is the ashtray out of the dashboard. And it's full of stuff. Doesn't look to have been used as an ashtray though. That's nice. One less thing to clean. Oh, lovely. That is a hypodermic needle. No idea what that is. It says long on it. I think that was the first owner. Oh, 
not a clue, a key for, what is that for? Not a clue. And some bits of broken plastic. I think these are bits of various these little bits of broken plastic I think are out the car from somewhere. They could be out the dashboard. They look a bit like it. A couple of little rubber buffers from somewhere. Probably a door or the tailgate or something like that. Not sure. A fair few bulbs. I think these are dashboard seat bulbs. All the lights did seem to work, so I'm wondering if somebody's been through and already done them. Um, which would be nice, make a change. And a more different bulb. I think that's probably for a side light. Oh, there, dash light. Uh, dashboard light holders, and we have a very similar one on Citroens. A bit of a nuisance. A trim clip from somewhere. Mm, some random Allen headed bolts, and those look very much like sort of dashboard trim pieces. Couple of safety pins. Ah, oh. and a pound. Those funny modern ones with the edges on them. Cash back.